Never met a player That'll let you take the W I'm tryna be a good boy, a good boy Let me be a good boy You make me ooh Can you tell I got a thing for you? Not crying for wolves To be honest, baby, it's all the truth I'm tryna play cool Cause I'm feeling you I'm tryna be a good boy, a good boy But I ain't a good boy, a good boy Let me break it down for ya Welcome to episode 3 Let's go Of Dropping Gems The iconic The iconic Dropping Gems I said the iconic because I'm with the iconic <laughs> Conrad Khalil Yo. Give it up Put the applause in there, boo Okay, right. Like, I, I you know, have a couple balls and some bombs. And How we feeling? How we feeling? Comrade, tell the people a little bit about yourself, who you are. I want you to go first, and then if it's giving too modest, and I'm be like, I, 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 <laughs> because so, too yeah, modest. Ahead. You know, I'm good for that. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Let them know. What's up, y'all? It is me, Comrade. Um, that's me, Comrade Khalil. Uh, I'm an artist. I'm a creator from North New Jersey. I'm 23 years old. Uh, I'm a singer songwriter. I do I do everything honestly um, from a creative perspective um, and um, you know acting, music, photography are uh, are how I live and express myself right now through life. you know I recorded my first record 2018. Okay, you feel me? I put my I work for that boy. And it, and we it. did that. We did that. We had mad fun too. Julian was in a video. Yeah, that video, wow. You know what's crazy is that it seems like it just happened, but it kind of is long ago. But I'm like, damn, like when you really think about it, I'm like, yo, I remember you know, every detail but, of that day. Yes. I think that's the thing. It's like I remember it so vividly. <laughs> I like, remember yo, God, every I really detail. the music video. Like, and then the the release when it when it came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, yo, it was it was ridiculous for weeks. Yeah. But little, We're gonna get into it. Actually, yeah, 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 we're gonna get into it now. This is going to be, I know this is your first time, you know what I'm saying? I know you're familiar with the show, Fact. but um, I'm not really gonna tell you what the stories are, we're just gonna oh, flow. Boy. We're gonna start with you know my favorite segment, the best segment, the most I guess you could say the most positive if you want to put you know quotes around positive, but it's we love to see it. Mm-hmm. And this week, starting off, and we love to see it is Cash Money, Young Money Records. <laughs> <laughs> Because they gave and paid the rent worth of two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for New Orleans residents. Wow. Yeah, yeah. In the wake of the health and economic crisis, the label's founders, Birdman and Slim, donated over two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to Forward Together New Orleans, the nonprofit organization that provides resources to protect New Orleans during this pandemic. That we will also be addressing. I'm look, you know what got it. You know what I don't want to go back. Okay, like get closer to the end. Okay, yeah. I don't. I don't want to get in. We're, yeah, we're not going to end on that. By the way, okay. y'all, because I don't want to end it on a deep. Fact. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, I'm here for it. I'm, we love to see it. We love to, especially these rich celebrities. I'll be waiting for an opportunity for them to open your purse. <laughs> Open your purse. Like, come on, y'all. All this yeah. time, y'all be doing all this, spreading this money in these, in these music videos, and then y'all, when, it, when, it's, when it's time for you to give it out, all of a sudden, Man. you want to act blind. Right, okay. Stevie Wonder to the shit. No, Stevie Wonder to the... Yeah, no. We don't real. got time for that. We really don't. So, I'm glad that nah, Birdman, yeah, yeah, Young that. Money, Cash Money, I'm here for it. I'm really here for it. Is um, that the queen? Yeah. That- speak, <laughs> speak, okay, period. Because you already knew what the next story is going to be. Shout out to Megan Thee Stallion. She got her first number one with the queen. Okay. Like, her first number one with the queen, Beyonce herself, um, with Savage Remix. And um, this broke so many records in it terms broke so of, many like, records. Billboard. It broke so many records. And I just... It shook a lot of shit up. It really did. <laughs> it really did. Like, damn. Okay. Beyonce. And, like, do you know who Beyonce is? And this is your first. Mind you, it was already doing well. So the fact that Beyonce hopped on it and. Nah, but I just like Megan. I, I just, I've always liked Megan. I love I, I Megan. I always did. And she an Aquarius. Okay. 
Wow, yeah. Yeah, so That's her energy is early. always, like, spot on for me. Like, yeah, y'all. Like, you, especially you, you as, a, as a female Aquarius, okay. it's like, okay, you know, you, I fuck. I don't know too many female Aquarians. I love all the female Aquarians. I maybe Aquarians know, I like, know. two male Aquarius, honestly. I don't really know that many of y'all. It's the female Aquarius that, that hit. I have to get in. I know, I know one. But the, the male Aquarius is we. Shout out to Jess. We a different type of, we a different type of breed, not even gonna lie. Okay. <laughs> like, nah, we t- I just took it there. Look, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> shout out to Megan and Beyonce um, because, like I, like we were saying, the song was for charity and they raised 756200 mm. dollars for charity. Damn, that's almost a mil. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They when it cracks a mil, do you think Beyonce will be like, oh, yeah, by the that way, y'all, say <laughs> thanks for listening to the Saturday. <laughs> like, she said, what? What? I think I was talking mad low or I wasn't in the mic. Oh, no, you're good. It oh, looks wow. like that. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a make sure you mix the master. Oh, hi. He got oh, nervous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was nervous. Like but that. no, um, I think she'll... Uh, I forgot what I... What was I saying? That the the song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Megan almost got a mail. Yeah, almost got a mail. I think when she, yeah, Where's when money? it gets to a mill, I feel like she'll be like, hey, y'all, thanks for getting it to, uh, you know, number one. That's one thing that I do yeah. think is dope. The artists and all these songs, all their new records was mm-hmm. going to charity or something. Yeah. I mean, as it should, because the government clearly doesn't want to distribute funds and help out, you know, different states The government and stuff. doesn't want to be the government. Okay. <laughs> like, they don't realize they work for us. <laughs> exactly. Like, anyway, the next, um, and we love to see it. Um, it's twelve year old. What? How you say this? I don't want to butcher his name. <laughs> twelve year old Kedron. Kedron Bryant. Yes, he went viral. Kedron Bryant. Kedron Bryant. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, I said oh yeah, that's the that's the dude that was singing. Yes, he's saying, um, "I just want to live." I and, need that shirt. Um, he's uh, actually he appeared on the uh, talent series Little Big Shots, um, and he's from Jacksonville, Florida. He's a young and upcoming gospel artist, and. Um, a lot of A-listers were getting into it. Janet shared it. Nas. Whoa. I was looking in the comments. I seen Katy Perry. Let me go to his what? page. Let's get into his comments. Look. <laughs> what you got going on? Look. Oh, uh, that's dope. <gasps> Not when I clicked it. I thought that said Kobe, Kobe Bryant. I said Kobe Bryant. Because I was thinking the same thing, but I, I want to say it. On. <laughs> if y'all don't log out of Kobe and stuff. <laughs> they was about to rob me up. Because I, I was about to be like, who? Uh, you know yeah, what? Yeah, that's going to rob me up. Nah. I don't got the time. Rest in peace, Kobe. I don't, yeah, the show nah, was Nah, but shout out, it really did look like that, though. You yeah. know when you look at yeah. a word real quick? Okay, I and said. And you be like, yeah. Child, really I had to move my bangs. <laughs> I had to move my bangs and say, because I know they lying to me right now. Okay, look, he got candy. Okay. <laughs> don't do candy. For oh, real, House Wives of Atlanta. <laughs> you know, not who. Uh, who else he got in here? Um, oh, I mean, oh, J.K. McCart, Katy Perry. Oh, you want to know something? Katy Perry came on shuffle the other day. And it was, uh, I think it was Teenage Dream. Yeah. And I was just thinking about like how iconic that album was. Like she got five number ones off of one album. Hey. Like uh, I said, nah. you better go down the scale, <laughs> love. It's like, sing, Katie. But anyway, yeah, shout out to him for singing and, you know, bringing some positivity to the TL. Yeah, nah, his video, I really felt that. Yeah. I don't know why people have, like, negative stuff to say. We ain't even gonna focus on that. We but not. it's just that, like, come on. Like, do y'all understand the times that we in? Okay. And this like, young brother over here singing his heart out, talking about, no, for real. you know, his experience right now. Mm-hmm. And people got something, you know, negative to say. It's like, you can't never please. The, the, internet, the internet is a yeah. gift and a curse. We're actually going to get into a gift and a curse. Okay, say no more. I'm so glad you said that. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, by the way, y'all, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> what you about to say, yo? Because no. I don't know. Go ahead. Just in case. I'm going to get close to the mic. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say just in case. Is anybody out there who... Mm-hmm. Likes ASMR videos. Oh, wow. Yeah, we can take it. I'm just going to take a sip real quick. <laughs> but no, this iced tea is really hitting. What you got in your cup? You all. <laughs> when I tell y'all, 
a Conrad chocolate. had the mic in the cup. Like, and nigga looked like he was trying to drink the mic. Wait. I said, what is going on over there? I'm mad now because it's all going but I. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the people enjoy the ASMR. Even, like, I'll be looking at the ones where they be typing. Oh, yeah, thanks. The keyboard with the nails. Um, okay, well, <laughs> um, summer's looking pretty promising for you guys and gals and those who are unsure um, that want to go to Disney World again. Because Absolutely. on July 11th, their Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom will be opening. And on the 15th, their Epcot and Hollywood Studios will open. So... This is Disney World and Disneyland. Um, I look. I don't I'm think confused. I'm gonna just be jumping out into. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. I'm not. I can't. I can't do the public spaces right away. Which July? We we end of we, May. We end of May. June, so that's a that's July. About, so that's about a month. month. That's about a month. Month between. That's a, um, a month and some change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But look, 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 look. Look. But we was on quarantine for how long? Okay. okay. But y'all could. In a, in a month, right? Oh, I, yeah, Expect okay. me to stay right in the house. Absolutely I don't even want to not, do a plane because th- that's like, where the most people gather. Are they yeah, stupid? Yeah, literally. Please make it make sense. At some point in like, time, you got part, to. You and got it's crazy to. because, like, the country and parts of the country, I should say, are not even reopening because of the case is going down, or it's like drastically, I should say, or like it's looking so much better. It's literally because. We were making the money, and they're not making money. So now they're trying to just shove us back into society. Like I'm not, I'm not here for that yeah, at no. all, at all. But the fact that people, <laughs> <laughs> not that people, snicker, <laughs> nah, because <laughs> the people, the people, the people been acting up since mid quarantine, <laughs> having parties and doing all that stuff. You saw that post that was like, I love how, I love how, <laughs> I love how people. Uh, in the in the East Coast, just decided oh, that, that that the pandemic <laughs> that, was that, over, that quarantine was over. I they said... just got. Tired. I love how they just got tired of it, and, and they just said, I "You said, know what, y'all? You know what, we man? having a kickback this weekend." Like, no, I'm not gonna be there. And dude. I went right there. It, t- not, and I went. <laughs> yeah, and I had you my did go to some gatherings, but you know what? I I was clocking y'all. I really was, and I made sure that the masks were on, stayed on, and, and it. Okay. And put that shit right the way. And he put that right the <laughs> way. I showed it. And don't give a fuck. And don't. And I put that shit right back on. Oh. And then she put it right back on. Right back the fuck on. Right back on. <laughs> like, um, speaking of putting it right back on, um, Two Chains uh, decided to uh, reopen his restaurant early. And uh, the police put that violation right back on, and they said <laughs> you are gonna have to close it down, Mr. Chains, because we are opening Disney World again. We are opening Disney World, but and we are not opening one. your restaurant. Which What's I mean, it's like half and half, because half of me is like, y'all need to let these black businesses open. Y'all already don't want to give us our Fact. things and our proper, you know, relief funds and all that. But then the other half is like, bro, we don't need to be killing our people off by opening up too early, especially in a mm-hmm. restaurant. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. eating at home. Yeah, I just think we should rock with takeout for a minute. Yeah, like just pick yeah. it up. Just, just go pick it up. Just call it in. Just call it. It's it's quick anyway. Why not? It's not like you want to go sit down. It's like now nah, I miss outside too, but I, I don't. Do. <laughs> I don't miss it that bad to me. I feel like I can't even eat off nobody fork right now. Like I don't want yeah. you so no, no, thank you. Mm-mm. I'm good. I'm good. Is everybody lazy who work in the food industry anyway? Right. They I don't rinse it off. Throw it in the thing like, uh-uh. Yeah. I, people is just dirty. I can't guarantee that they, they, they scrub a dub dub. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't put it past. And would it? Or under. Now, a couple minutes ago, you mentioned, you know, the internet is a blessing and a curse. You know, it comes with its good and its bad. And then up right. and the down, you feel what I'm saying? But um, this past week, um, it was it was a lot going on. In terms of <clears throat> people having some issues with uh, some racism mm. and racist past. Mm. Now, I feel like last week I talked about Doja Cat on the show. Doja and K- yeah, K- when Marquise, K- yeah, when Marquise called her kitty litter. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... <laughs> You know, hey, yo. she that's um, some marquee shit to say. That really is some marquee shit. Like, <laughs> I would have cried. Yeah, the heard. fact that <laughs> the ghetto. But no, um, she got exposed. You know, for being on uh, in some 
uh, chat rooms with some racist white men mm -hmm. and entertaining them and calling them nigger and using the hard R. And she put out a, a Instagram story press release that said, I'm not reading this press release. It's still on... Not me, me even calling it a press release, but you know, <laughs> she just gave the typical paragraph and explained how uh, she was in those public chat rooms, but she denied any use of being um, in any racial conversations. Um, she's uh, sorry to everyone that uh, she offended. She did clarify that she is a black woman and half of her family is black from South Africa, and she's proud of where she comes from. Oh, excuse me, almost bit my damn lip. Proud of where she comes from. So, I mean, like, Doja, this literally happened last week. Like, she was in there literally last week was a screen recording. Oh, that wasn't an old video? Yeah, no, it was not old. And that's the thing where people have an issue. I, it just don't sit right with me, like, the entertaining whites and being racist with them and letting them probably be racist towards you. I, I just yeah, want her to do better. I just can't play like that. Yeah, like... I'm not with it. it it's, yeah, no. And even then like, with, then ahead, with yeah. the platform mm -hmm. I'm on, I'm not even about to play around like that. Like, you right. stupid You got to let shit go. Right. Even if that's what you was doing okay. before you was famous. All right, great. Now, come on. You just know what the exposure is just different. But... Mm. Doja Cat is a troll. We've been new. So She's hopefully she gets it together because right after the incident, she was selling uh, Buck Doja Cat t-shirts on her website. And I'm <laughs> just like... She said, well, if y'all going to say that, I'm going to come up. Learn from this. <laughs> Where is that quote from? Learn from, from the... Um, Tyra, wait, 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 wait. Tyra Banks on America's <laughs> Next Top Model. When Tiffany got sent home, we were rooting for you. We were oh, all rooting, rooting for, for you. Learn from this, Doja Cat. Stop it! Like another one. It's Jimmy Fallon. Oh boy, I'm tired. I just all right. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. Now, I wasn't really. I mean, I was upset a few years ago when this first came out. But Jimmy Fallon uh, received some back. Oh my bad. He received some backlash this week for an SNL skit where he was wearing blackface, and um, he decided to impersonate, you know, his fellow comedian, uh, Chris Rock. Um. This skit first aired in 2000. Now I was about to say why I never saw it. Yeah, this. Um, now <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of funny. <laughs> like, oh boy, when you look, gotta. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I. What? I just. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> See, all right, because we now we supposed to be laughing <laughs> because that oh my, that sounds just like him. I'm yeah. not even accepting this. Absolutely yeah, not. No, it's not. Yeah, you know, it's not acceptable. I mean, it's funny because it's Jimmy Fallon, like comedian. It's funny because at the Jimmy end of the day, Fallon, like when we get to like, the root, I just feel like I wouldn't have been accept. I wouldn't have been comfortable doing that. Yeah, like no. I like as a grown man, you know what the you know what blackface is. Yeah, like you know what. Like, come on, mind you, this was in 2000. Like. And they didn't. Everybody just saying something now. Yeah, I just. I, I'm gonna. I. It's literally another half half situation because it's like, okay, yeah, this happened in 2000. Like, at this point, where the the outrage, like, so we why bring, so why bring it up? That's I, and I don't know, like, if how. It was good that's then. A really what's good up question. now? Like, like, what's up? Like, what, I don't, because I don't if y'all green lighted green, well, green lighted. If y'all green lit this back in 2000, like, I already know y'all already had the outrage and the backlash because we know the history of blackface. So I don't know how this got brought back up. Yo, again. it's all the, it's all the, ugh, it's all the, it's the people in Hollywood with the longevity. Yeah, that's getting it right now. There's a fire up yeah. under them for some reason. It's weird. It's like only the fuck Ellen. <laughs> I know Jimmy that's what Fallon. I'm saying. Like, come on, like, and I, these people? and I hated this for Jimmy, but he apologized. Um. He said in 2000, while on SNL, I made a terrible decision to do an impersonation of Chris Rock while in blackface. There is no excuse for this. I am very sorry for making this unquestionably, <laughs> unquestionably <laughs> offensive decision and thank all of you for holding me accountable. Um, I guess, Jimmy, just I just need everybody to just stop with the with the race. I, I can't even <sighs> say stop, but I'm just tired of people being exposed to racism. And it's because somebody came up with that idea. Yes. And nobody said, maybe this might be a little controversial. Okay. So what's good in that department? Like, I, that train went off the tracks. That train went off. 
<laughs> well, y'all's president well, Donald yeah. Trump again decided to uh, use Ti's hit song "Whatever You Like" in a Snapchat ad. Um, and the part where it says, you know, the where he's like, "Don't want nobody, don't need nobody." <clears throat> the Trump campaign decided to um, distort his words and go. Wait, wait, I wait. don't want Joe Biden. Don't need <laughs> Joe Biden. Long as me, long as you got me, I don't need Joe Biden. When I tell y'all, no, because I was trying not to laugh. No, but I, I said, <laughs> yo, I got, I got. If I heard that, I think I would have. I think I would have really laughed at that. If I heard that in real life, but honestly, like, what makes this, what, what makes this man who calls us thugs? Think that he could just use us? Thank you, because that's going to be next. Of course, you know, T.I. and his team put out a statement, and they said it goes without saying that T.I. would not in any way ever support this divisive president, his policies, and the... destructive propaganda of Trump. The people of our country deserve far better than this. Oh, that was a read. Mm -hmm. Um, They basically said um, they are taking uh, his legal team um, and media partners are already moving forward expeditiously to block this unauthorized use and set the record straight in no uncertain terms. I know that's right. They said... I don't know who told you to use uh, T.I. song or our client song, but... But if you would have asked, it would have been a no. Okay. Like... And that's how we come in. And that's how we come in. Now, we're going to uh, get back into uh, uh, into Dump. Is that Karen? No, this is not Karen. This is actually um, Jennifer. And um, she is a uh, Twitter star from this past week um, that emerged from the scene of a Minneapolis Target that was looted now during these protests over the death of George Floyd, which we will get into, um, who, by the way, as we know, died by a police officer murdering him by kneeling on his neck for nine minutes. But this woman that we are talking about in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. She's identified as Jennifer and she could be seen in the video sitting in a wheelchair and uh, blocking people, mostly black people, because the white people that were in the video, she stabbing them, them, right? (laughs) She let them, you know, just walk free. But the black people, she was trying to stop them um, and she was stabbing them and stabbing at them. And they ended up spraying her (laughs) with with a fire fire extinguisher extinguisher. and um, projecting different objects at her. To try to get this knife out Yo, of her as hand. soon as as soon as they hit with the fire fire extinguisher, something went flying. They they, yeah. went, they didn't waste no time. She got her they ass to get her out the plain way. Plain and simple. So after, after she says they tried to give me milk, tra- but my eyes are just water. Okay, like yeah, they tore her up. Yo, oh my, God. my yeah, we watching it. Mm, <laughs> mm. But look, rightfully so, because for one. She was causing. I, she was wreaking havoc out there. Literally wreaking havoc. And then talking havoc. about some trying to play victim. Okay, like, you know, he was outside that. You know that's doing the same brand. Thing. That's the brand of the Karens. Like they love to wreak havoc or be problematic, and then you know victimize themselves. And then when themselves. the retreat, when yeah. the tables turn. Okay. No, come back, Karen. Come back. Come back. What was that? I thought you had a knife. Come on. What Yo, what's up with you, Karen? Oh, right. So they got her right together, and come to find out, she actually was able to walk, and she was wreaking havoc later on. In she, the wait, night. she was able to walk. Yes. So, so all right. There's another video posted a few minutes later that said um, she was also following up on her stabs, and uh, she was walking. That's her right there. She um, was walking. Yeah, and look, and walking right back to the wheelchair. I don't know. <laughs> I need Jesus to swoop down and just do what he does best because this is getting out of hand and I'm just tired. It's like living in a movie. I'm just so tired. It's like living in a movie right now. It's like, what? Like, this is real? Now. Oh, boy. (laughs) Tom Red's reacting to um, the article of uh, actor Shameek Moore, who um, I think he voiced a Spider-Man. Yeah, he voiced the yeah, Spider Man. He was in that But he's show. also on this Hulu show, uh, Wu Tang Minute. Min, min, min. I know I could read, but what's that word? Mini series. Mini. See? <laughs> it was the lack of hyphen Mm-mm. for me. That's a mini series. What you thought it said? Minerals? Min- you know what hyphen is supposed Minis- to go there. Don't play. Mini series. Min- Thank like- you! <laughs> I said. What? Child, anyway. You don't um, know him from nowhere else? From who? You don't know him from anywhere else? No. You don't remember that show with Jaden with Jaden Smith? The Get Down? 
I think she oh, was in that. In there. See, I started watching that with somebody, but I decided to not continue. So yeah, I just it just wasn't going to be revisited. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. that's just how it is. It'd be like that when you start. It's just like mm, I'm not revisiting this. Yeah, no. So <laughs> that was that on that. Take but, it with you. Um, he went on a very coon like rant on Twitter and says, "See, I have a very wait strong- after the live." No, this was before the live. We're going to get to the live. I didn't know it was two parts. Yeah, very much two parts. So um, he says, see, I have a very strong opinion that the black community hates to hear, but needs to hear. We need to learn how to deal with police and or racism because this is the part of the scenario that we have always failed to fix. We have to work on our community before blaming everything on racists and police. He goes to say, I. he goes to say, One, there is still black on black violence that needs to be addressed. And two, if we know that the wrong white person could change our if if we know that the wrong white person see see, he's not even making sense. It's it's the it's the illiteracy. Why do we give them what that's what I'm saying. He's basically went on this rant to point the finger and tell black people to point the finger back at them you know and to what? look in the mirror as if we are the reason why and I'm it's some ahead. it's some black people go that ahead. like there's some black people that's too 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 black too 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 woke for their own good or yeah. too too smart for their own good. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? They and try they to find the flaw in Uncle us Sam. before uh. which the obvious, you know what I'm saying, we know. But it's like, brother, you didn't think about this? Like before you, it's like did he because it was do his it was research? running in loops. Yeah, and that's the thing that really like took me there. It's like he was just going, and people were educating him in the replies. Like, bro, regardless, it's the, of, it's the headline for uh, me. Yeah, it's really the headline. Shamik Moore said Rosa Parks could have taken the cash, and that's where we get to him on Instagram Live. For him to have thousands of retweets with comments and re- and replies educating him on how what he was saying in terms of black people being the reason why we're always constantly murdered by the police is wrong. He goes to try to say that Rosa Parks should have taken a cab and that there were black owned cabs back then. And she shouldn't have uh, basically <laughs> created the boy, the bus boycott movement. He put both of the O's in cool. Like I don't know, I don't I don't really don't know what else to say. Like it's just so draining at this point because it's already difficult it enough to like, deal with white people that just don't get it and that can't acknowledge the privilege. But for somebody who's black to downplay everything and tell us we're the reason, it's just like a cycle of ignorance. You know, it was a Daniel Caesar moment. <laughs> It was wow. very, it was very Daniel Caesar moment, yeah. and I'm tired of it being them. Like why us, y'all? Why us? And what the? They know shoulda, coulda, woulda. She coulda did this. She coulda did that. Woulda, da, 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 da. She didn't. Yeah. What you knew all your life about Rosa Parks? Like, I mean, why try to make something up right now about okay, some cabs? Talking about she coulda. T- about some calves, some black on calves. Trying to downplay the entire movement. And it was so much bigger than, oh, she could have taken a cab. Yeah. She nah. could have walked if she wanted to. Okay. That's not the point. Like, that's, that, that statement just gives me, he was in agreement with Jim Crow laws, mm-hmm. basically. Like, she took, she took, yeah, she, she should have taken a cab. No, no like, she could have. We got to fix us first. We got to think of, about like, taking a no. cab before we t- think it, about taking it, the it bus. It shouldn't be like that. It, it shouldn't be like that. Like, I, I just can't. It was definitely an underthought. Yeah. Yeah. It was That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. A really it was an underthought thought. Yeah. Under the thought. Under. It was like under the it thought of sub, what could have been. It was a sub yeah. thought of an underthought. <laughs> okay. It was a sub thought of an underthought that shouldn't have that sh- left his. Yeah. And we're using thought <clears throat> very lightly. Very. Very thin. lightly. Okay. It's a very italicized <laughs> quote around it. <laughs> like all lowercase. <laughs> all lowercase. Like, no, this is not no. Yeah. The font size is way mm-hmm. like the font size is like three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he wasn't thinking. Yeah, absolutely not. And in the midst of him not thinking, your president again was not thinking. He decided to tweet on Thursday night at twelve thirty in the morning. 
let me pull up let me pull up the tweets <clears throat> he said i can't stand back and watch this happen to great american city minneapolis minneapolis <laughs> yeah oh period i said it right a total lack of leadership. Either the very weak, radical left mayor, not him making this political, Jacob Frey, get his act together and bring the city under control, or I will send in the National Guard and get the job done right. These thugs mm. are dishonoring the memory of George of George Floyd. And we know thugs is a loaded word, which basically means niggers or niggas. Like, come on now. Because he capitalized it. Yeah. <laughs> And I won't let that happen. Just spoke with the governor and told him that the military is with him all the way. Mind you, he can't deploy the military for protesters. Mm. Anyway, he said, when the looting starts, the shooting, shooting starts. starts. Now, the significance in the backlash was very strong. But the significance of this quote is... It's notorious from the racist Miami chief of police, Walter Headley, from back in 1967, um, when he said the same thing. And this was um, <clears throat> this was back in Miami, 1967, uh, when uh, violent reprisals on black protesters was also going on. So the fact that he used the same rhetoric, <coughs> rhetoric from somebody right. who was notably racist back in the 60s. It just speaks for itself in terms of Trump's true agenda, which we completely, we completely, and he exposes himself time after time, time after time he exposes himself on purpose, and he noticed it's not the first time he used thugs, but it's not even about just yeah. thugs. It's just it's just his freaking, it's his perspective. Period. It's just like so inhumane. It's like. I, it's like Satan. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's really Something along that very line. Like, very like uh, you have no type uh, of passion, regard yeah. for mankind, the human race, any type of equality. You are a bigot. Yeah. Like I, he's honestly truly like despicable. And I, 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 I wouldn't Selena, want to stand in a room with Donald Trump. She tweeted the other day. Oh yeah, no, I couldn't either. <laughs> I couldn't be in a room with him. Um, but she tweeted. And this is probably part of the reason why I like it's so disgusting that the president would actually <laughs> say something like that. Like, can you imagine if Obama had that mindset? Like, if Obama was like an Uncle Tom or something like that, and he tweeted that, like, as the first black president, mm. like, when I tell you, like, the world would be, would've been they would have lit him shambles. up. Shambles. Like, I mean, granted, they're lighting down up, but Obama, like, he was, nah, it he had been... backlash from both ends of the media. Like, Democrats who didn't want him. I'm just glad that he's. So, I'm glad he's uh, safely out of that mess, and we can just sit back and okay. be grateful for his existence. Period. Uh, because I was nervous for him. When President he was Obama office. did what he had to do for eight years. What he could do. The mess that other ass shitty presidents left behind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, uh, Obama's his legacy. I'm glad we're going, and I'm glad. Yes, like <laughs> you said, like he got out of that because yeah, like. I I feel like we were talking about the oh I was talking about this this morning, um, JFK's assass assassination and how crazy that was. Like I was always nervous for Obama mm -hmm. because even though he wasn't problematic, like some of the least problematic people that just wanted justice mm -hmm. in America and in history, like the most terrible things happened to them. So I'm so glad that Obama made it out. I'm not wishing anything bad on Trump. Like that's not where I'm <laughs> where I'm going with this point. Right. But uh. Trump just Obama would never would I never just, Donald Trump need to just make he need to just make a building somewhere in the middle of nowhere yeah, just, and just go there go and there. just go there go leave to your us, office leave us alone. go okay. to your office and and count your money and yeah. just be quiet and shut and just be, okay and just, until forever. election day and let us know you forever out. Like, like just that's it now not even just your reaction to like seeing him say this, but what was like your reaction in terms of this past week with the death of George Floyd and your thoughts and feelings in terms of what you were seeing on social media? I didn't watch the video. I can't mm -hmm. bring myself to see another video like that. Um, especially like after I saw Mike Brown, it was literally on Facebook Live and I saw mm -hmm. what happened to him and how he was murdered. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. But in terms of your reaction to everything that's been going on this week, talk to us put us on well it's just it's just at the point where it's like i get i get what they mean by desensitizing now mm. like when i see that word in in 
relationship to posting videos of black men getting killed is like, I get it. Because it's almost like I've seen, I have, I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. And obviously everybody's going to have an opinion. Everybody's going to be in an uproar. You know, everybody's going to want something from somebody yeah. or everybody's going to want s some group of people to say something. And it's just a lot of tension. It's like it starts a chain reaction through Oof. the world mm -hmm. because when you identify as the same people that this is happening to, if I look in the mirror and I can see myself as George Floyd... Mm. Or Ahmaud Arbery. Like, I can see that. So the tension comes from that place because I resonate in a different in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a different way. My mom resonates in a different way. Like, I'm her only son. Yeah, yeah, same. Mm hmm. You know. Like, there's a different type of fear that's exposed. Like, not even exposed, but it's just like, it's, it's, so, it's so natural. It's like fear, and it's also like, at the same time, like rage. Yeah, anger. I'm pretty like, sure a lot yeah. of us have experienced some ounce of hate. Yeah, yeah. Talk about it. And that's real. when you watch those videos, if I watch that video, my body is clenched the entire time from play to end if i could even watch the whole mm -hmm. thing my body is clenched i could feel the tension uh i feel like it, it I literally feels like i'm there yeah that's what's like scary about it because Bruh. you can identify with what you're seeing especially another black man not even like an old like he was a senior citizen or anything like that so it's like this could be me i think that's really what intensifies it even more like seeing things like that and like reacting to it you know a lot of people uh, don't get that though a lot of people yeah, are not gonna get it they're not they're, they're not gonna get it and this and this our job as a community of people to keep each other like aware you know what i'm saying it's easy to be scared you know and that's 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 what they want yeah and honestly i i understand the protests and the mm -hmm. and the riots the looting, was watching all of it. Live today. Yeah, I, <laughs> I get it. Like, I feel like after a certain point, people just go to the next level because peaceful, peaceful protests clearly were just not working. You know, mm -hmm. so people are now at the point where it's like no justice, no peace. You know, literally. Um, and I feel like I just want everybody to just be safe as they are protesting. And to just not put themselves in a danger or in a position to get arrested, but make your voices heard and do what needs right. to be done and for be justice safe to be served. for yourself yes. Yes. and for everybody that you bring in mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. I just so I just got a DM like this is why I didn't go to okay to the the rock or whatever with the protest in New York. Mm -hmm. There's protests in New York today. Yeah, and yeah, I saw and one in Newark too. One. Yeah, oh, Newark? yeah, they were going to start at uh, Lincoln Monument or something like that. It wasn't going to be in downtown. I think that's what. And about. and you know what's crazy? Like my my first my initial reaction when I first I saw one of those flyers like um, like maybe like three days ago, mm -hmm. and it was for like some in Union Square or some close over in oh, New York. I oh, can't remember. Yeah. Where it was. To New York, they take it there. Yeah, and I was like. I think I think I wouldn't I I think I wouldn't mind going. Like and I was thinking about it from the perspective of like, yo, this is a movement right now. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Like I for the experience, I guess you could say. Like yeah. to see mm -hmm. to see this for myself. Yeah. But it is you really do gotta think about safety though for right. real. Especially because cause I have to remember too. We're in the middle of a right, pandemic. Right. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Like, and there's a lot of tension in the air. People are out there with rage. People yeah. are out there, you know what I'm saying, real passionate. And if I'm going just so I could, you know what I'm saying, be a visionary and see it and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, like look at my people and see how, how other people are feeling right now, you know, that's a risk all in itself. It really is. You know you know what protests I do like, though? Come on. I like July, July 7th. Don't spend no money. Oh. Uh-huh. 
Wait, so what is that? From now until July 7th? No, not from now until July 7th. We need some things. But <laughs> on July 7th, a day of not spending any money. Oh. A black, you are black, black pers- in this country. Oh. Okay. Don't spend well, yeah. your money on Let's a certain wake day. That up. I forget Let's what it's called. I gotta look. Yeah, we need the <clears throat> okay. attention. Attention. Actually, you wanna know something? We're gonna end up taking a quick break. I bet. I'm gonna when I do my little advertisement or whatever, I'm gonna make sure that we got the information right okay. so everybody could start being aware. Cause we could wake that up. ASAP. And when we come back, <laughs> mm. it's gonna be way lighter because we needed to get this out. You know, we had to be we had to be woke and bring bring forth these issues. But yeah. we're gonna have a female R and B moment. We're gonna talk a little bit about Kaylani's new album because I know you've been getting into mm-hmm. it the way I mm-hmm. am, mm-hmm. and we can have people get into it. Everybody, you know, deals with a lot of the themes that I feel like are, is on the album. Um, so we're gonna do that, and we'll be right back. We're back, everybody. Um, we so damn silly, yo. Nah, we really are. Yeah. I, Conrad and I, if y'all don't know, I don't know why I didn't start this in the beginning, but we've known each other for like four years at this point. I met Conrad yeah. in, when I was in undergrad. Well, we were both in undergrad, and we were going to Kane University. And I met him on the Dougal patio. And if you go to Kane, then you know what the Dougal pad is. You <laughs> not know what now. I'm saying? Not now. But if you are Kane OG, yeah. you know Kane OG. Yeah, because now like, they don't know about the Dougal that new Kane, they don't know about the Dougal They don't know about the Dougal They don't know about Sozio. I mean, they don't, not Sozio. They don't know about Whiteman. Whiteman. Yeah, they don't know. Downs? Yeah, they really weren't in the Whiteman Lounge. The Downs did not have no lit parties uh, after we stopped going there. So, come on. Yeah, so I met Google Conrad on the Dougal Pad, and his nickname became uh, become. Rapping his nickname became Pad. Conrad from the Dougal Pad. Yeah. So, Conrad and I um, have been close friends like literally ever since then. Like we naturally just became cool. And one thing that um, helped us remain as cool um, definitely was I feel like our music taste. Because mm-hmm. he got into what I got into, and I got into what he got into, and if he put me on to something that it was of quality, you know what I'm saying? And Julian appreciates good yeah. music, like and yeah. good vocalists Thank and you. good lyrics. So he'd be like, "Yo, did you hear this? Da 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 da. Put me on. Yo, did you da da da? Put me on. New was like this song. Okay. So yeah. And um, it started ever since then, 2014. Well, it was like 2015. Yeah, 20 fall. Oh, not even no. fall 2014. Or no, no 2015. 2015. Yeah, fall 2015. Yeah, fall 2015. Yeah, fall 2015. Um, all the way up until now, spring 2020, and we got the beautiful Kelani. Kelani. <laughs> Her new album <laughs> drop. You feel what I'm saying? And was, what is it? Everything was good. It was good it until, was until, good it, wasn't. until it wasn't. It wasn't. Okay. Mm. Now, this album, I feel like it's not my. How should I say this? I guess I guess it is my favorite Kaylani album, but I don't think it's her best album. Mm-hmm. But in terms, it's her best album in certain facets, like the like we were talking about the content that like what she's singing about, her lyrics. Like, what were some things or some of your favorite songs that you can tell stood out in terms of like her growth from the Cloud Nineteen mixtape all the way up until it was good until it wasn't. Um, yeah, oh, I feel like I right here if you want to oh, yeah, get into yeah. it, okay? Because I feel like I feel like I watched Kaylani like grow up, well, Literally. not fully grow up, but you know, she was so from, baby, yeah, when she came from out. coming into like, the crazy. into the industry and really, um, like really shining. Like the first time we saw her live mm-hmm. at King, oh my god, mind you, that was my first time that really getting into her. That was after you should be here, job. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who is this girl? That was that EP. I was yes. like, uh. yeah, she that I was sold on that. <clears throat> I honestly was because the yeah. day before, I was like, "Let me go listen to a Kehlani song so I don't be sitting over there like, mind you, not able to bump or get into it." <laughs> mind you, I listened to the mixtape the night of the concert. I got out of class. I said, "Let me add this on Apple Music." I was like, "Oh, this is cute." I was not the night. Yeah, of, the not night walking of, to the yo. show, said, listening to. It was her and Jeremiah. Now, granted, even oh, back- they did have something back then. Yeah. Okay, the little King concert. I said, okay, y'all got Kidlani and Jeremiah together. And I'm like, okay. Like, I wasn't really checking for Jeremiah. I think literally back then, he only had we and birthday sex. Mm-hmm. And late. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Allergies, y'all. But um, I'm going to mute that sneeze. Because I know somebody in the mic was like, Corona! Like, Corona! 
Look, I had that on the first episode when my grandma took her suit mm-hmm. and it went down the wrong pipe. It was like, Yo, that I first episode hit. I love like your there. grandma. That episode I love her was too. Bad. Oh my God. Well, obviously. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously. Better. But yeah, yeah, like, Kehlani really, like, that was a defining moment in terms of yeah. my love for her. Mm-hmm. So, definitely. yeah, but what are some songs, like, that, that so, really stand out for definitely her? Definitely. For her growth, I definitely mm-hmm. hear um, growth and hate the club. Ooh. Like, of course, like uh, you have to. Like, that's completely uh, going against the the grain, the fabric of mm-hmm. the music industry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The you know fabric love of club music R and B and hip hop. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. we in the club with it. You know what I'm saying? I see you in the club. Da da da. da. But to to be like, you know, to be honest, like I don't really want to go there. Mm-hmm. I just went because. You was there, okay. and I just was trying to get, like, to get with you. So I had, yeah. if I had to go through the club to get to you, and I'm like, I, you know, what I'm saying, uh, so I, I like that. We've I was like, yeah, so real, mm-hmm. so real, so real. So I really like hit the club, and I think that shows a lot of growth. Um, and I got my Sega on it. Yeah, and, and I got my Sega on it. And up late, or Ari Lennox, up late again. He plays the sax. Yes, that's him on the mm. set. Get into it. I didn't know my Sega played the sax. Yeah, I saw him live at um, Afro Punk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he takes it there. I remember that. Talented. Nah, yeah. Nah, that song definitely hits. Yeah, I agree. I love Hate the Club. Um, Can You Blame Me? I love that too. Can You Blame Me? I feel like Can You Blame Me is... I think that's my favorite. My favorite. I think if I could relate Can You Blame Me to another record, it would be um, You Should Be Here. Ooh. That's like the same... Yes. It's like the same like Your mind. Feeling. Yeah, it's like... Your mind. Mm-hmm. That's wow. her. That's her. You should be here on this. Yeah, album. I'm here for it. I like open too. You love open. Yeah, yeah. Kyle might be singing open when he be when we be hanging out. He loves yeah. open. I love open. Open is like yeah. She's yo. This song. This album is well yeah. written. It's that's yeah. That's, that's my the thing. thing. I'm like, it's like. I know Kilani. You know she's famous sometimes for having bops and every song on the album they slap or you know eighty percent of the album slaps and well you know. But this really put into perspective where her pen is at, where her experiences yeah. is at, um, her experience, her experiences are at. Dang, she I really slurred that. Baby. Wow, she a whole I, and I'll be forgetting that. I'm like, why does she be giving me so much grown vibes? And she's the whole mother. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> have, she sees stuff so differently. Okay, completely different. Perspective. Completely different. So like, I appreciate this album definitely. It was yeah. good until it wasn't. You get you get you get five stars from me. Yes, it is definitely a five star album. Now that I really got into it, granted, when I listened to it the first time, I feel like I'm gonna grow out of that eh? that that space though. What like, space? That I like the the themes, mm-hmm. but I feel like some of the themes be, just relate to you know the stuff that's in my mind at the time. Mm-hmm. But I feel like as mm-hmm. the summer progresses and I start to be outside and a little less in my head okay. and my back, sometimes you know, what I'm saying? then I feel like I'm gonna just want to turn up. Yeah. And I'm going to just listen to this. Like, okay. And you're going to know. Let me get into XYZ. Yeah. Let me get into XYZ. You feel me? Um. So, yeah. Shout out to Kilani. The album is amazing. Now, I'm going to do this little quiz slash tournament with you. And it's really going to see where your head is at when it comes to female R&B overall. Are you ready? I am ready. <sighs> Summer Walker versus Georgia Smith. Dang. And what am I, what am I saying? It's just a mini versus, like, oh, which, mini versus? Either or, which okay, one, okay, Summer okay. or Georgia? Think. I know I'm going with Summer. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I can't even know. I, I, I Georgia Smith. Um. Ooh, let me not play her. I know. George, oh, my God. She, um, see, you see, my, I, the my first favorite song by her is the one. You said Georgia Smith. The but first thing that came to my mind was Snow Allegra. Cause were- Ooh, well, she's she's gonna be up here. They do kind of give each other, but Georgia Smith is the I'm, one. I'm gonna say Summer Walker because I feel like Summer Walker not done showing us what she could do. Okay, and she really got some fucking talent. Yeah, and like, I feel for, like Summer like is raw. more now. She's more multifaceted when it comes to her sound. Mm-hmm. Like she can give you literally her chilling her bedroom, and I'm like, okay, this is bedroom guitar vibe. But I like that. And she can give me shit a club. Too. Yeah, come I on, like that. that's you, a good you balance. Know what I'm like. Summer talks her shit. Yeah, and, and her and London like, on the track, they they mesh well yeah, that works. musically. OD. I'm here for it. Okay. So round one, <clears throat> Summer. Okay. Now, Janae versus SZA. Who are you going with? SZA. Oh. Um okay. 
I'm going with I SZA. think I'm going to go with SZA, too. I'm going to go with SZA. Yeah. I think SZA is definitely, like, in the lane of her own. Yeah. And she's from Maplewood, New Jersey. Oh, my Come God. on. I'm from North New Jersey. Essex County got to stick together. Like, I'm I supporting. Heard you. I'm always supporting SZA. I heard you. Um, but Janae Aiko, she just, you know what I'm saying? She's dope. Janae Aiko is, is, is a vibe. Yeah. Like, you can't deny that. Yeah. But she's not always the vibe. Okay, yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Janae, you have to, I feel like, be in that certain type of vibe to really... Yeah, yeah. I mean, she has her standout tracks where, you know, you can just play it, but for the most part, yeah, Janae, she takes me to deep places. Yeah, she takes me to deep places. Okay. <laughs> she be like, I be starting to meditate. Yeah, like, okay. And it's the, I be you know like, what I'm saying? Dang, thinking about but it's everything. a moment in time for it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you throw some scissors, like, I could catch a scissor vibe. And in, in many different... Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I bet. I heard you. Period. Yeah. Okay, so in that round one, it's going to be Summer versus SZA. We will be revisiting that. I'm going to give you time to think. Now, on the right side of this bracket, I have Ari Lennox versus Snow Allegra. Mm. (laughs) I might go, I'm going to go with Ari. I'm going to go with Ari. I'm going to go with Ari. But Snow's writing. I can't. I think I'm gonna go with Ari though. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, because it's just yo, know, that is really hard. Ari, I know. Linux, but you gotta Snow pick Lennon. somebody. Mm, think about it. Ari Linux like got is, is Ari Linux I've is, been is, FaceTime, Shea Butter Baby, Shea but Butter. Snow Allegra got I want you around. Whoa. Find someone like you, Toronto. Mm. Snow Allegra. You know why I'm gonna say Snow Allegra? Okay, Come because on. Snow Allegra gives really good visuals. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She performs in, in the and camera. You are her performance a visual is really good. Connoisseur. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I feel like she can make her songs. Um, even if I don't understand their song, she tells she like she does a good job in the visual. Okay. So I'm gonna say that. But I do I do fuck with Ari Lennox though. Yeah. Period. Okay. So Ari Lennox has that round. Now the next <laughs> is Kaylani versus her. Dun 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 dun. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, you did there, did I? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh. Come on, that's my stuff. So I'm gonna say, oh. I feel like you're gonna go with Kaylani Child. You think so? Yeah. Go with Kaylani. Why? Just do it. So I could go with her. <laughs> <laughs> what about her? Going? Because for me, <laughs> I'm gonna choose her because of the musicality of it all. You know, fun fact about me is I used to be in the band. I played in band in school from third grade until I graduated. Wow. Like before I went to college, played drums in the church, all that. Wow, I can make music, drums? you know. Yeah, get into it. You feel me? I have a little gig. You play soccer. What yeah. do you find time to do all this? Um, literally after school, like I would. That's weird. Like we're gonna pause from this uh, R&B girls tournament, but yeah, I would like literally come home from school. I would have well, for the most part, thankfully, band was in school. Like I had it as a class okay. so i didn't have to do it anything you know after school outside so, you know i would do um drum lessons for a little bit on saturday like on a week gotcha. or something like that but outside of that yeah like soccer was after my homework was done or wasn't doing my homework or i would do it you know oh, you was a rebel. yeah i was never a homework type of person like i feel like i always finagled like doing my homework here and there but i just felt like yeah, facts. it wasn't i was need, just, i was just a know? forgetter I was just cool with. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, like, like uh, oh yeah, we I'm gonna get A on the test, child. Like, right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do the next five. That's stuff to do, yo. <laughs> <laughs> don't got that. <laughs> don't come by my desk, yo. Don't got it. Like, but okay, so her versus Kilani, you're going with. <sighs> hmm. I'm going with. Caroline. Oh, You're going with her Lani. Great. I'm okay. going with her Lani. Okay, we're her Lani. Now, <laughs> Summer versus Scissor. Back to the left side of the bracket. This will determine who is the finalists. Damn. 
<laughs> this is kind of hard. This is a cold game, Julian. This is it's a cold world out here, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold world, yo. Okay, so, so you said Summer versus Scissor. Summer versus Scissor for the semifinals. <laughs> summer. Summer. Yeah, I'm going to go with Summer. I feel like I'm also going to go with Summer. Ooh, but... Uh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Summer gives Summer can sing. I don't know because SZA fixed her voice. She can sing live now. She sounds good, and that's not shade. <laughs> that's not shade because Summer has always been consistent live. Yeah, Come I gotta on. see how I was let's wake it up now. Because no- well, let's wake it up. SZA fixed her voice, and now she can sing live. Yeah, Summer has always taken it there live. If you want to talk has. about it, so I'm. That's why I. I, I think I, I think overall I'm gonna go with summer, but if we were to say control versus over it, I'm gonna go with control, and that's just on period. Yeah. 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 Dude, sorry if I seem a little more. Even starting with supermodel like SZA and ending with twenty something like she just didn't need to be done with that. Yo, like, yeah. Yo, honestly, twenty something. Twenty yeah, twenty something is unmatched. They're just not. Seeing They're gonna it. get it though one day. Yeah. Yeah, that that's what it, yeah, they're gonna get it one day. Okay, so SZA is the finalist for the left side. Now, on the right side for the semifinals, we have. Oh, damn, we really gotta pick somebody. <laughs> I guess we can do I guess we could I do, like that laugh. <sighs> okay, so for you, it would be. Damn, you really gotta pick between her and Kehlani. Pick, come on. Come on, like, for for. I for for for? For 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 for. I, for, for, I think for. let's just say Kilani for you because you know you be bumping Kilani on the regular. I do love Kilani, but I just love her. But you're trying to get on biased tees, right? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to. I'm. Mm, I'll be biased okay. because, like, I, like I do like Kilani. Yeah. But I like well, how you I listen to her, her well, for her vocals. Like she really Ooh, is a true. <laughs> Vocalist and Kaylani could sing. Right. Kaylani's a singer, uh, but her is yeah. She yeah. You, yeah. All right, it's giving her. So child, we gonna put her. Um. No. All right. Yeah, her can take it there. She can take okay, it. Yeah, she yeah, can take it there. All right, all right. <laughs> so her. <laughs> so her versus who did we say between Ari and Snow? We said Snow. Because of the visuals. Mm-hmm. So between okay, so her versus Snow, who you going with? Her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was so easy. Okay, so now we got her versus Charles. Her gonna eat summer up. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Yes. Oh, That's a crazy word. bracket. Look how the team Imagine turn. them on versus. Ooh. I don't wanna talk about it. I just got a headache. Imagine. <laughs> don't do Imagine. That. Don't do summer. that. Imagine a world like that. Is who could a, who could do a versus with her? Hold up. With who? Her. Her? Um, Kaylani. Yeah, maybe Kaylani or Summer. Kaylani or Summer. But her got more projects. A bigger archive than Summer. True, because Summer has first day is I mean last day of summer and then over it. And altogether that's maybe like twenty songs yeah. right there. So yeah. <laughs> can't play your whole discography, my baby. No shade. But yeah. she gotta step, like that, me step those prizes <laughs> up. Her got the her compilation, which is volume one and volume two and new songs. And then she got yeah. used to know her compilation with the volume one and volume mm-hmm. two and new songs mm-hmm. and features. Collapse. Wow, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her's gonna eat summer up. Now with Kaylani. <laughs> Oh no! Cause it's looking like it's looking like it might not be. It might. So I might have to just lock the phone and just go to bed. I don't want to see the outcome because mm. it's gonna be. It's gonna take it there. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna take it. It's gonna, it's gonna take it. But you know. It would be cute. But it's all right. It's all good. We'll see. I feel it's like they be. might end up doing a live where they just play their music and just be vibing. I could see them doing I would, that. That would be fire. That would be way I, better. I watch. Because Tori Kelly and her already had that type of moment. Yeah. So that's cute. We love that. Tori um, Kelly get to it before everybody. They are. I said Tori Kelly. I mean, Tori. <laughs> yeah. Tori Lanez. Tori Lanez. Did you say Tori Lanez? Tori Wait. 
I said Tori Kelly. You did? But I think you were thinking of Tori Lanez because he be on Instagram oh, yeah, Live be tweaking. Oh, yeah. Okay? And the people be on there <laughs> pouring milk on their ass. I'll be like, now, if y'all don't put that in y'all damn remember, oatmeal. Remember the middle of quarantine? He popped up on Live with Megan. Like, how the oh, fuck? Tor- how? And then Megan going to have I love Megan. But she tweeted the other day, y'all ain't on quarantine. Y'all out and about. But. Megan, you don't have everybody up in your house having all types of quarantine Pop, parties, parties, recording, parties, breakfast, breakfast, remix, TikTok, dancing, and you trying to clock us. Wear your mask. <laughs> okay. I ain't see Megan in a mask. I ain't see, look, but she got the blood of Jesus covering her because of all her success. So we already know that this is true. Corona will not come up against her in Jesus' name. Rebuke. Per, per. In the name. In the name. And at least she is in the house, y'all. So. In the name. You know. Okay, in the name of our God. You better know Tasha. Anyway, <laughs> um, I love that we were talking about different R&B and music and all that good stuff because even when I think about like you and your artistry, I can't even really put you and what we've talked about for your musical future in a box. Mm. So if you were to describe to somebody who wasn't listening to your music or is not familiar with Good Boy, which is currently on every streaming platform... What would you describe your current music sound and where you want to go musically to be? I would describe I would describe my my current music sound and Yeah, where where is Conrad in his music space right now? Talk to us. I I think he's in a space of there's 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 one thing that I feel like I want to carry throughout every everything musically that I ever get the chance to do in my life. And one of those themes is Black Boy Joy, mm-hmm. because I that's that that I feel like that is a perfect reflection of who I am and what I embody, like in my personal life mm-hmm. and just who I am character wise. Um, and I want I want people to feel that through my music, because um, black men in the industry and black men in music a lot of times have um, a very aggressive um like satire about them yeah that that well, makes mm, them mm. um feel like they have to or makes them look like I'll say right. that they're doing something to be um of status or mm-hmm. looked up to or happy or wealthy like you got to have money you got to flex you got to okay. have this you got to have that and i feel like for where i come from for me to have the energy and like radiance that I do mm-hmm. in my everyday life coming from nothing. You don't got to have nothing to be happy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, people do go through a lot of things mm-hmm. in life and I understand. But for me, I feel like that's I'm a good example of True. black boy yes. that has joy. That, you know, I don't need, you know, every single luxury in the world to mm-hmm. have it either. Because it comes from a different place. Yeah. Um, but it also feel good too. So Black Boy Jerry, that's why Good Boy got that good head bop. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Vibe. It really I want people, knocks. Yeah, like, I want people to like forget yeah. about whatever they thinking about during mm-hmm. the day. When that when my music plays, I want people to just automatically like you know want to like, turn it up or just feel good. Like, you yeah. know, even if you tap your feet or you you know yes. what I'm saying. You have an, a very infectious, infectious sound. Yes, you thank know? you. Um, even the songs that they haven't heard but like mm-hmm. I've heard or like songs that you'll just be messing around and like you'll sing or you'll have them in your notes app or in your voice memos whatever right. I'm like it's it's easily catchy it's something that cause granted like you're singing good boy but I feel like even women or you know people who don't conform to gender when they listen to that song they can feel something and they can still sing it from mm-hmm. a place of wherever they are right. in that moment you know I that's gonna set you apart definitely in this generation of upcoming R&B artists, especially coming from Jersey, like, you Thanks. know, you got to put us on the map. Like, right. it's going to definitely, you know, excel you farther. You feel me? Yeah. That's another thing, something that you mentioned I thought was dope. Like, the fact that um, if I write a song, it, you don't just have to be a man to, yeah. to you know what I'm saying, to want to sing it or come from that perspective. Mm-hmm. And that's just saying that the story is usually the the weighs the most in my music so the story resonates with so many different people Mm -hmm. because you could put yourself in the place in a story you know what i'm saying i'm not saying things to keep reminding you that it's not about you yeah you know what i'm saying like using like saying you know this person or that person or this girl Mm -hmm. or stereotypical things is more so very detailed things very Mm -hmm. things that you could actually follow along in the story visualize for yourself and put Mm -hmm. yourself there so it's dope that Girls can sing the song, and clearly, you're not a good boy. You know right. what I'm saying? And if you identify as a girl, you're not a boy. Okay. So it's like, 
the fact that you can sing it is still dope. You know, yes, what I mean? like and not feel like conformed to like you weird or because mm-hmm. you know how when you was younger and you used to sing a song, and you used to change the word or the gender yeah. of the song. It's like right, why, right. why did we used to be so pressed back then? Yeah. But like <laughs> uncomfortable. Yes, uncomfortable. Yes, and instead of just living in the song and enjoying yeah, exactly. it, for exactly, just was. living in the song mm-hmm. and just being there, like right there. Do you remember the first song you like wrote, or when did you start? Maybe writing your own songs. I do. I actually I can't recall the first <laughs> song I wrote right now, but I'm not gonna lie to you, it wasn't bad. Oh, like, okay. It wasn't you bad. You need to uh, awaken I need that to, first song. But you know spirit. what? I got, I got I got notebooks still. I got notebooks Ooh. with 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 old lyrics in them, and mm-hmm. um, if I if I look at it, I'll I'll hear it. I'll I'll go uh, back to that time. Okay, and I'll be able to sing it. But right now it's like you know I'm drawing a blank. But the the songs that I was writing when mm-hmm. I was like 12 years old, mm-hmm. like they was decent songs. Like they were songs that, like, would be um, like I could sell to a, a artist. You know I believe because even something good simple. Boys, something I, it could be a TV that, show jingle. You know what I'm know saying? Was going off back you know, then, and even now, like, ugh. I'm telling you, you like I surprised first? myself. Oh, wait, what did you say? No, I'm saying I'm telling you, I surprised myself. Okay, I see what you're saying, yeah, because if I was just writing shit, I'm like, oh, wait, hold up. Yeah, looking like, back, it's like, yo. Wait. This but I always listen to music for the words, that's why. Ah, uh, and that was about to, that's exactly what I was about to ask. I was going to say, are you, when you're writing, even, I guess you could say you can answer from a space of when you're writing and then when you're listening to music, are you lyrics first or melody first? When I'm writing music, I am definitely kind of both okay it's like the lyrics spell out Mm -hmm. as the melody is formed Mm. but i think the words come out faster than the melody okay because after the words come out Mm. i can shape it to the melody of the song Mm -hmm. so that way it makes sense when you break it up but the um this like for instance writing good boy the words definitely came out first. It's so it sounds talky. Yeah, that's why yes. it doesn't have a it doesn't have a established like you know melody. There's mm-hmm. just a beat that that keeps you the right. pulse. It's the way you but ride. But for the most uh-huh. part, good boy is like very talky. I'm gonna give you two options. Yeah, because the way when it first yeah. dropped, we was just using it in combo, and it's right. like I'm gonna give you two options. options. Okay. We can ditch the scene <laughs> with me, you know. But then it, as it picks oh. up, it gets there. Yeah. But. I think the words, the words and the melody come out at the same time. Mm-hmm. Okay, words that's fair enough. Stuff. Yeah. That's fair enough. When, hmm, I guess you could say when you're listening to other artists, are you the type of person that likes? Eh, I can't even really say in terms of specific genre. Like, are you more of a soulful, or I guess? For you, I've noticed, let me just start it off like this. I've noticed for you, you enjoy, whether it's a pop sound or a gospel song or an R&B song, there still has to be like some type of soul element mm-hmm. to it. So when you're writing for your first album, when that thing drop or your EP, whatever you want to drop first, do you find yourself looking towards something on the more soulful side or do you find yourself looking for something like, okay, this is just going to be on some joy type shit? Like, I think... Hmm. I can't ever escape soul. Yeah. Okay. I can't. I, and I like, feel like the joy aspect is gonna find its way in there. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you yeah. know, some like some when I open my mouth to sing, no matter what I sing, I sound like a little black boy from church. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, you have like, that like I have uh, that to it. that charisma that's yes. like, come on, I'm trying to share my joy with okay, y'all. Like, come on, you and that's essentially what it's like in church. It's like mm-hmm. you trying to get everybody to feel the same joy from the Lord that you're feeling. So that's mm-hmm. how you sing. It's yeah. like real inviting. Like, come on, yes. like da 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 come on, y'all. So I think I can't um escape that. And plus I got a lot of like vibrato in my voice. Yeah. That just kinda like it no, ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, okay. real churchy. Um but it depends because I feel like I feel like I break my uh the genres of what I write naturally mm-hmm. up. So mm. if I, if it's a if it's something that's a little more, I feel like it'll sound more mainstream or mm-hmm. radio. Like sometimes out of nowhere, I just come up with very radio ready uh, tunes. Okay, like the I'll lyrics come out and the, <laughs> the, the the you know what I'm saying. And I get it like going, and it's like oh I could hear this on the radio. Okay. You know what I'm saying. And then sometimes 
those like songs that are radio ready, they end up being like the more a little more popish, mm. like a little bit more like you know. There's probably a lot of music going on. Okay. It's abstract. It's like duh, yes. horn. probably in my mind, I'm hearing horns. <laughs> okay. da, probably Give people dancing. Yeah, yes. real dramatic. You know, I'm so extra. And I'm also like a theater person. Yeah, like I grew oh, yeah. up acting. You used to do that in high school. In high school, yes. I was in shows college. in high school. Mm. I studied theater. I was a, I had acting class even in college. Yeah. So I'm very theatrical, especially in my music and what I'm writing. Um, but when I get to things that sound a little more of the R and B tone, mm -hmm. that's when it's a little bit more personal. I yeah. feel like it's a little more personal. Yes. Or it's a little more intimate. Mm -hmm. Or it's a little more, you know, what I'm saying behind the curtain, you know, when the show is over type mm -hmm. of thing. So I like that that duality for the two because I feel like they just marry together really well. Being able to be, you know, super, super high energy mm -hmm. for the performance. And then when the curtain comes down, it's like, you know, let me let me really spill it to you. Okay. So whatever it let is. You know. you know what I'm saying? If it's some love in there, you know what I'm saying? It'll come out of music. You know, mm -hmm. that's real you know what I'm saying, It'll take you there. Because and that's what it's going to do. And that's what it's going to do, period. Now, speaking of what it's going to do, this is my last question before Conrad performs. Oh. You know you're about to be the first performers on the show? Let's wake that, that up. Yeah. Uh, let's let's throw an applause in there. Okay. Like, a, the people are excited. They I'm are ready. excited. I'm I excited, know. too. Excited. Um, mm -hmm. But we're just going to do... What do you think, or not even what do you think, but what do you see yourself doing in your music career in the next, I'll say, five years? I'm going to say this into the mic, and I'm going to say it into the camera, because we're going to manifest this thing. We're going to manifest you this thing now. So, um, in the next five years of my career, mm -hmm. I see myself doing the things that are not predictable mm -hmm. in music and um, in every facet of everything I do because mm -hmm. when I think about my career I'm not just thinking about you know one one thing so in photography I feel like I'm going to explore some different things and break some barriers there that's mm -hmm. going to allow me to travel the world more that's going to allow me to get you know certain publications or certain uh, recognitions with my photography um, and my collaboration with different people that I meet in different places um so that's one, you know, aspect of of the creative world, the mm -hmm. creative sector for me. Um, another one is, uh, you know, making sure that all of the content that I produce, all of the things that um, I write, all of the visuals, the treatments, and things that I put together for myself come out of house, you yeah. know, come from home and. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's an official business. Mm -hmm. And maybe if a production, you know, company or studio or whatever yes. it is, it's going to be mine and it's going to come from me. Absolutely. And I will be working for myself. Um, and music, musically, I feel like I'm going to continue to write and I'm going to continue to have experiences um, growing up and transitioning into manhood yes. that are going to allow me to... Um, you know, push my pen and dig mm -hmm. deeper. And you know, music is like therapy. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you write about stuff, you reflect on it, mm -hmm. and then you know, a year from now, you know what I'm saying? Now, <laughs> you know, from now like, a year from now, <laughs> a year from now, you know what I'm saying? I can reflect on that same song I wrote and go back to that place and also realize I'm not there no more. Come on. So there's a therapy in, in songwriting and, and yes. music. That's why I don't be in no rush to put music out because it doesn't take away from me being an artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't take away from what I do and right. what I practice and what I embody every single day, whether mm -hmm. people see it or not. You know what I'm saying? My voice notes is crazy. Okay. And I know that when y'all do hear it, it's going to be the right time. Yes. Because it's going to be my time and it's mm -hmm. going to be the moment that I'm currently still working for and working towards and accepting the fact that things don't happen overnight. And when you move with a certain intention Ooh, and, come on. Um, you know, a certain trust in God mm -hmm. and yourself, you don't worry about you know, the impatience of others, even though I know that it's strictly love and support, um, I, I still have to, you know what I'm saying, feel through stuff. 
Yes. But not yes. even to be too deep. Feel they still it. need the music. So I still okay. need to, you know what I'm saying, you get in there me? and get them a little something, something when I can. So period. And that's what I love when you said um, you still need to feel through things because regardless yeah, of, facts. like you said, you can record the song or you're going to drop it when it drops. I think no matter the time when you first recorded it or when you felt those feelings to when the song comes out, the feelings aren't going to be invalidated. Right, and right, people right. are still going to be able to listen to your music and still feel that place that you were in because either they've been there mm-hmm. or they're currently in mm-hmm. it or they feel like they might be going there. So your music might be the thing that sets them apart and makes them realize, like, I either don't need this or, you right. know what, whatever you're singing about, you know? Right. And, and this is a so wide range it. of things, y'all. It, that's why I'm like, I'm it's here a, for it. Because, yeah, it's a uh, wide range of things. Because your music taste alone, like, is so wide range. So that's mm-hmm. what... I mean, outside of me knowing your talent level, that's where I just know, like, the quality and the content of your music outside of you just being kind of like captured as a photographer, a videographer. It's just going to hit different. Mm-hmm. And we're excited. We're ready. I'm excited. I'm so glad you came on. Me too. I just... This is dope. It was it so was, chill. Was like, I just... Look, that's what I be getting. Let me lean back. Chopping Let Tim's. me lean back. You know what I'm saying? Boy, look, I can't wait to season two. I can't wait to see and, well, yeah, see it, hear it, all that good stuff. I feel like even though it's called Dropping Gems, I have people on here and it's not going to be giving, like, forceful, like... yeah. The way we just speak and let things be known and wake up certain topics and bring awareness to certain things. And even like the way you're just speaking about your career, where you see yourself in your music, there are so many things I know people are going to be able to take from that and listen to that, especially creatives and singers and songwriters. So I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. It is my pleasure. You already know you're going to come back. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you something. This is not about to be no, oh, you were on before. No. Like you want to do it tomorrow and just say it was episode 12? (laughs) Okay. We're going to say it's episode 14 or whatever episode. I'm going to be like, yo, welcome to the 100th episode. Like, it's like, nah. They would never know. They would never know. Okay. It's like, nah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to finagle y'all, but. (laughs) Okay. I'm not going to finagle y'all. I like but I do appreciate everybody listening. Um, I hope everybody has a good week. Um, please be safe. As we come um, to the to the closing of hopefully, yeah. Um, you know what we know so far as being quarantine and social yes. distance in twenty twenty. Well, not social distancing. Yeah. We could still rock that out right. for as long no, as you can. Look, and maybe that just need to be a thing. Yeah. Because Americans that could, could just be, stay alive. yeah, that could just stay alive. I like social distance. Yeah, it's, back up. It's fine. Just, I don't it, care. Because twenty twenty three, you know, something six feet, bro. Six feet. Because if Man, I could lift my arm out and you and I could touch you, I, that's I don't like that. Yeah, back up. I don't like that. You feel me? But social distancing needs to stay. Yeah, yeah. like say just, six feet. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Um, but quarantine, we do need to get back to the real world, mm-hmm. and I definitely think some precautions need to be taken. Yeah. Um, but I'm ready. You know what? That's how we're going to end it. And that's that. We are getting ready I'm for, getting overflow. Ready for overflow. No matter what the situation is looking like with people rioting and looting and black people it's dying just, by the hands it's of the just police. Crazy. It's just crazy. We're the still going to keep our today is ridiculous. And we God believe first. that we're going to get ready to see some things we've never seen for our good mm. or for the good. For the good. Because the light always wins. Good always wins. Come on. All the time. No matter how evil these people Uh, portray, you know what I'm saying, the mask they wear, Mm -hmm. they can't hide from the light. It's going to get you. It's going to get you. It's going to get you. Okay. (laughs) Can't do it. That's why I ain't worried about that. Don't get got this week, y'all. We love you. Every little thing. You know what I mean? Hey. Hey. Uh, Don't uh, worry. uh, Ha. uh, About uh, a thing. uh, Yeah. uh, Mm. uh, Mm. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. <laughs> See y'all later. Period. See y'all. Be loved. Yeah. This is a good boy. Shout out to the Dropping Gems podcast. We lit. I'm gonna give you two options. We can dance the scene, just you and me, or you can take your first offer. From the dude in blue across the room Looking like he got problems And I don't wanna stop tonight I'm trying to be a good boy, a good boy But I ain't a good boy They say where to smoke this fire 
Well, I'm a better way to think of flames Let me take you higher I can change your mind and change the game You never met a player Thought I'd let you take the W I'm trying to be a good boy, good boy Let me be a good boy Say, you make me ooh Can you tell I got a thing for you? Not crying for wolves To be honest, baby, it's all the truth I'm trying to play cool Cause I'm feeling you Break it down for ya See I'm the type of guy That gets what he likes And I'm straight for her. Don't ever kiss and tell But I'ma wear you well If you're all for it hey, The pill's right or blue She said right I knew that you're a good boy Good boy But I ain't a good But I ain't a You make me ooh Can you tell the I'm not crying for wolves What you did, look what you did, look what you did, look what you did, look what you did. I'm a good, good boy. Look what you did, look what you did, look what you did, look what you did. Trying to play it cool Cause I'm feeling you I'm trying to be a good boy Good boy, sing, but I ain't a good boy